Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of How To Make Apps. If you've been following along, you know we're in the middle of a multi-part series rebuilding Instagram stories from scratch. But for the next couple of weeks, I'm in Korea, so I won't be able to continue with Instagram stories in depth until I get back. But in the meantime, I have a couple short episodes planned. In this one, we're gonna further explore something I said in the last episode. Now to communicate with this view controller from this one, you'd think like, oh, I can just store a reference to this view controller on this view controller. And you could, but you should never do that. Why did I say this? Because it goes against one of the core tenets of software development, which is that you should always seek to keep your code as reasonable and generic as possible. Now, if we don't use a protocol and a delegate, and we use a direct reference to another class or another view controller when calling back to it, it might work fine, but it will break down very, very quickly. So I've put together a simple project where we can explore this. Let's go take a look. I built a simple app using Xcode's default tab-based project. I don't use these very often, but this was a perfect opportunity to do so. We have two different view controllers that both open the same option picker view controller. The option picker just allows you to pick between one of two options, very simple. In this option picker, we need to report back to the view controller that called it with the option that is selected. We're gonna pass that back as just a string. The data format really isn't important here. We don't care if it's a string or an object or an array of objects, it doesn't matter. It's how you reference the first view controller. How you call back to it is what we're dealing with today. You can always store a reference between objects just by using a simple property. Let's take a look. First of all, this, this view controller is backed by a view controller called first view controller. And this other one is backed by one called second view controller. The option picker view controller is backed by option picker view controller. The question here is how do we call back to first view controller from option picker view controller? I'm gonna show you the most generic way to do this. This is the way you shouldn't do it. And that is by directly referencing the first view controller. Okay, so when we tap option A, we are going to call back to the first view controller, which is of type first view controller. Remember, this is a class type. This is just the name of some property that happens to be of the class first view controller. We're gonna call back to that view controller with this method selected option. Now, that method is, is implemented in first view controller here, which is why the code compiles. So we call back and we say, hey, they selected option A, we pass it option A as a string, and then first view controller receives that string and has the option to do whatever they want with it. In this case, we're just gonna print that option to the console and dismiss the modal view controller. Let's give it a try real quick. Open the, the option picker with select options and I'm gonna select option A. That worked just fine. User selected option A. Let's try it again. Option B, user selected option B. Excellent, okay. So this seems to work fine, no big deal. But what happens now if we want to open the same option picker from a completely different area of our app, say the second view controller. So say we want to present it here, which we need to do. So we'll copy this code from first view controller, put it in the second view controller. We already have the stub for, for the button touch up inside action. Now, here's the issue. We, we create the view controller with this method here by asking the storyboard, all view controllers have a reference to the storyboard they were created from, which is why we can do this. And then we say, hey, instantiate the view controller with an identifier called option picker. That is a string that I entered and configured right here. Hello, there we go, option picker. So that means, hey, instantiate this view controller for us. That's put into this VHC option. And then ignoring this line for a second, we present that Go to the second view controller, hit select options, it presents it just fine. The problem is that now we don't have any reference to the second view controller from within inside the option picker view controller. We only have a reference to the first view controller. Okay, so we could just, you know, sure. Second view controller is the second view controller. 
And then here we can say, if self.firstViewController is, is not equal to nil, then do this. Else, if self.secondViewController is not equal to nil, then do self.secondViewController.select option A. And then we could do the same thing down here for option B. Helps if you name this right. Okay, second view controller doesn't implement that function, so we have to go do that. Let's just copy it from first view controller. Sure, why not? Copy and paste is a programmer's best friend. Something no good programmer ever said. Okay, so now it compiles. Then we go back to the second view controller and we assign vc.secondViewController equals self. And give this a shot. Go to the second view controller, select options, option A. Great, works. Option B works. Okay, great. So technically this works, but you can see how inelegant this is. If we were to add this to another view controller, then we're adding another else if, and we're adding another property. This is unmaintainable and it's ugly as hell. So let's look at the proper way to do this. What we wanna do is instead of starting from highly specific and working backwards, we wanna start from highly generic and work forwards. So the most generic, kind of object you can create as a protocol. It's not even an object. It's just a way of wrapping functionality. You're saying this thing, I don't care what it is, but it does this one thing. That one thing is this selected option. That's the only thing we care about. We don't care if it's a view controller or an object or a button. It doesn't matter. We just care that it receives this function selected option. So let's do that. Protocol, option picker delegate. And it has a function. Did select option would be a better name for that function. And the option is a string. Easy enough, that's all we're doing. So now we'll ditch this and we'll just call it delegate. And it's an option picker delegate. Look at that. And now we can put anything we want in there. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that whatever we put in there has to declare that it conforms to the option picker delegate. And this is how we do that. So now once we do that, and we try to build, you'll notice it's gonna give us a build error here. Do you wanna add protocol stubs for this because it does not yet conform to the option picker delegate? Heck yes, thank you Xcode. Not a good place for it, so let's move this. Move that here, check. Here now this needs to change from first view controller to delegate equals self. Easy enough, and that way this same exact code that's here in first view controller can now go into second view controller. We will also make this conform to the option picker delegate. Delete all of this, place with that. Well, really, we just replace this line. And then, easy enough. Go back to the option picker delegate, and now we can clean up all this code, punt all of that, punt all of this, and we will say self.delegate, that did select option equals A. Copy that, throw it down here, and change this to B. And now, load this up. Select option, option A. Select options, option B. Second, select option, option A. Select options, option B. Beautiful. Now, isn't this much better? Doesn't this feel much more sane than it did before? Pretty straightforward, right? I hope we can all agree that the protocol and delegate method is much cleaner and much more elegant than just attaching a referencing outlet to some other class. Next week, I have another short episode for you. And in two weeks, we'll be back building Instagram stories, adding custom text to the story. Thanks for watching. See you next week.